Forming but is being held back from truly thriving because of sanctions. Speaking at SADC's anti-sanctions day commemorations, he called on the international community to see the removal of international sanctions not as an act of charity, but as an opportunity to see Zimbabwe realize its full potential. Hashtag Zim sanctions must go has been trending as the leader said he will give direction on how the country should forge ahead against what he called the illegal sanctions imposed by the West. Tinashe Jonas is uh, organizer of anti-sanctions march which uh, took place in South Africa today and Fazai Mahera is MDC spokesperson. A very good evening to you both and thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. Let me start with you Mr. Jonas. So contrasting views from the ambassadors of America and China to Zimbabwe uh, as supposed to be expected. The former obviously in support saying that uh, we mustn't forget about the failures of the Zimbabwean government. What are your thoughts on this, uh, his motivation for sanctions to stay? Okay, uh, thank you for giving me the platform to express my views uh, around the uh, mandra sanctions, hashtag sanctions must go. Um, I respect uh, the Americans' uh, opinion about Zimbabwe. Uh, that the government is failing or whatsoever. Uh, although I'm not speaking on behalf of the government, but I think it's common knowledge that every country, every government uh, goes through problems. Then the magnitude of problems are then measured by the judge. But, okay, I don't want to dwell much on that. But uh, my view is that Zimbabwe, being an independent country, being a republic, a country with which is which has got its own full uh, sovereignty rights, its failures and its 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 I mean its strengths or successes must be measured by the electorate, by the citizens of Zimbabwe, who has got the power to dismiss the government or to support the government with another term in office and whatsoever. Then the, my problem is the U.S. as a sovereign country. Uh, it, U.S. doesn't allow African political parties, African governments to interfere with its, both its domestic and its foreign policy. So now, why, what basis is, is U.S. Um, policy, right. the politics of Zimbabwe? Let me give Ms. Mahere an opportunity to respond. What are your thoughts, especially to the statement that you can't have a debate on sanctions in the national interest? Well, I'm of the respectful view that, you know, Zimbabwe can only be built by Zimbabwean. The Zimbabwean government has got the power to control things that are within its own purview. And if you recall, when Mr. Mnangagwa got into power, he made a huge song and dance about the fact that, you know, uh, we should not moan about sanctions. He said that, you know, we should work around sanctions. He made a big uh, deal about the fact that Zimbabwe would be open for business. He made a big uh, deal about the fact that, unlike Mr. Mnanga, uh, Mr. Mugabe, before him, he was going to do things differently. He would reform the country. But now we see this very interesting about turn where we see the same excuses that were used by the old regime being used again by Mr. Mnangagwa. What we say is that Sanctions are just a propaganda tool that's being used by this regime to excuse the bad governance and corruption crisis uh, that we see in Zimbabwe. If you look at how this government has conducted itself, if you look at the human rights abuses, if you look at the abductions, if you look at all the corruption scandals, you see that it's not sanctions that are responsible for Zimbabwe's crisis. It's bad governments that it's at the root of Zimbabwe's suffering. Mm. So we can't blame for where we found us, find ourselves now. $10 billion in unauthorized expenditure. That's not sanctions. You see a president who travels all over the world in private jets, 1.7 million used in August 2019 to travel to Japan. In January 2019, he took a trip to Europe and the cost of chartering that private jet was enough to pay 535 doctors. Okay, so let me allow Mr. Mr. Jonas then. 
is mismanagement by the government. What is your retort to that? You argue that they um, are, are not targeted sanctions, that they are hurting uh, the, the country, they're hurting the region. But the EU, for instance, keeps on insisting that uh, they have extended these sanctions by a year because they want to see reform. Reform, they are targeting individuals that they say were very much instrumental, especially in the previous regime, uh, to the um, kind of atrocities that uh, Zimbabweans are set to face. So, as you've just heard Ms. Mahera say that there has been lack of reform. Okay. I, I respect uh, um, uh, leader my opinions, but I think it's a shame that a, a, a beautiful Zimbabwean uh, girl who was educated by the same government, who is a product of ZANU-PF and the government, uh, talk uh, snobbish and proud to support sanctions upon your country. Um, every Zimbabwean who loves this country, who is patriotic, patriotic who would respect national interest, must condemn a foreign action, the enforcement of human rights or any policy, the domestic policy of Zimbabwe being enforced by America. U.S. must not list, um, I mean, um, uh, items and then tell Zimbabwe to implement them. By doing so, Zimbabwe implementing those items, it's, it's willingly surrendering its independence to U.S. When Zimbabweans died, I mean, in mercy, supporting their independence. Let me touch on the issue of human rights that he, my learned advocate uh, touched on. Every country in the world subscribe to United Nations uh, see, see, I mean, the policy uh, on on the same subject of um, of, of human rights. I, I will quote here: two uh, on the 27th of November 2017, two United Nations experts on um, human rights. The first one being Mr. Uh, Idris Jazairi, a special uh, rapporteur on the negative impact of the unilateral coercive measures on the I mean uh, enjoyment of human rights and Mr. Alfred D. Zayas, an independent expert on the promotion of uh, democratic and equitable uh, international order. These experts, they say, stated clearly that the sanctions on Zimbabwe, number one, they are mis mistargeted. The, the target is the ruling elite, okay. which is Sarah right. PF. Let me, let me allow Ms. Mahere to answer you. And Mr. Jonas, if you'll allow me to say, I am wondering why you are referring to Ms. Mahere's looks in your response to the substance of what she said, but I'm sure she can deal with that herself. Ms. Mahere? Precisely. With all due respect, we're not here to debate my beauty. We're here to debate the national crisis in Zimbabwe. And on that, I'll say that what's caused the national crisis is corruption. By this government, 3.5 billion looted by Mr. Mnangagwa's government under command agriculture in 2018. 60 million looted under the Dragsgate scandal in 2020, still unaccounted for. The Auditor General's reports in 2019 and 2018, 2017, several scandals, almost no arrests no accountability and transparency international zimbabwe has pointed out that 2.2 billion on average is lost to corruption every single Ms. year Mahera, if you allow me to jump in and say this because uh, mr jonas does make the point that uh, they believe that the sanctions are mistargeted sadic itself has an anti-sanctions day in recognition of how harmful they are they uh, are saying the so-called targeted sanctions are having an impact on uh, all sectors of uh, the Zimbabwean economy. Do you disagree with this? Yes, we do disagree. I mean, if the president can charter a jet, a private jet from Switzerland, what would happen if that 1.7 billion was used to fund um, hospitals? Teachers haven't been paid, doctors haven't been paid, nurses haven't been paid. You know, these sanctions are quite unique, aren't they? That they're, they're, they don't 
uh, stop the government from looting, from, you know, the luxuries of political elites. We only hear about sanctions when it comes to paying for social services, for paying for public amenities when it comes to making an excuse for why government is not functioning. That's when we hear about sanctions. But when it comes to paying for their own luxuries, the health services board in Zimbabwe bought luxury vehicles, Range Rovers, for its top uh, board members. And yet every single public hospital in Zimbabwe is on its knees. That's not a sanctions problem. That's a bad governance problem. And how do you and respond so when to that, Mr. Jonas? all day... A whole day wasted, okay, yeah. money wasted thank you, thank you, thank you, for propaganda, for sanctions. They should have been Linda used Fadzai, I'm given the platform. The Can you respect that, Fadzai? I'm on the platform now. Please respect that. Um, Fadzai is employing a strategy of destruction. We are talking about sanctions here, but Fadzai is choosing to dwell on the topic of corruption and ignore sanctions. Uh, if, if you talk about corruption, of course there's corruption. In every country has got corruption. That's why there's corruption, well, the corruption index, which measures the percentage of corruption. But are they not interlinked, the though, Mr. Jola, as if the whole point oh, of oh, this... Oh, okay. I, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you, you. There's no rationale in saying when maybe a country is, say, is purported or suspected to have a high corruption uh, percentage, and then it, it must get sanctioned. There's nothing. There's there's no um, there's no co. Uh, I mean, there's no coexistence between being corrupt and then deserving sanction. Mm -hmm. uh, when corruption, if corruption is in Zimbabwe uh, to the level that Mr. Uh, my leader is worried, okay. I agree with him that, that if there's corruption, corruption must be fought by everyone. By right. everyone. Mr. Jonas, because we have run out of time, uh, just in 30 seconds, how widespread is support for your views? For instance, uh, we believe the march you organized today didn't have such a good turnout. Okay, the march was a success because uh, we respect the, the time we are in of COVID-19. So we, st we, we had to regulate a number uh, because, you know, when people are singing and excited, they become difficult to control. Uh, Zimbabweans are dying on, 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 on health care and whatsoever, on sanctions, then we can't then bring people together to fight sanctions and then they spread COVID-19 on it, on, 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 the, I mean, on, 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 right. among themselves. The, Ms. It was the issue of sending the message. All right, Ms. Mahere, just in 30 seconds, there's some 141 <laughs> entities uh, that have been targeted. Don't you think that they also play a role in the economy of Zimbabwe? Well, I think uh, it's a question of degree, that the government should uh, take responsibility for its own mismanagement of the economy. And I think once it does that, once it uh, takes responsibility for reforms, once we see a government not hiring Swiss and French jets, because it blames the West for, you know, um, you know, imposing sanctions, and yet those same Western countries are the countries from which these luxuries are procured. All right, thank so you we very see much. To be. And do uh, some dishonesty when it comes to, to that. All right, thank you so much to you both. Unfortunately, we have run out of time tonight. Shay Jonas, the organizer of the anti sanctions march, uh, which took place here in South Africa today, and Fazaya Mahere, you, you've just uh, seen and heard from their MDC spokesperson. And uh, we move on to other news. The United Nations 